take the lid off the film can and using either an awl or a hole punch, you're going to want to punch a hole in the direct center of the film can wide enough that you'll be able to fit your bolt. Okay. Taking your two washers, your one nut and bolt, put one washer on the bolt and slide it through the hole that you made in the top of the film can. If you need to make it a little bit bigger, you can. Then slide the other washer on, and for right now, just loosely put your nut on. Okay, take a small piece of foil, and you're going to want to cut two parallel rectangles so that they can fit around the outside of the film can. It should be small enough that there's a little bit of a gap on either side. So once you've marked it out, try and cut it as rectangular as possible. One piece is going to go around the outside of the film container, and one piece is going to go around the inside. You can use double-sided tape, sticky on both sides, to put on both the outside and the inside of the film can. You're going to want the foil to lay as flat as possible, with as few wrinkles and air pockets as possible. So after you lay down some double-sided tape, put on your parallel plate. And you may have to adjust so that it's not quite as long as the can. Now lay down the foil as smooth and as straight as possible. And make sure that as little overlap as possible, but that there is definitely not a gap. The inside is going to be a little bit trickier. You're going to want the foil to be at the same level on the inside as the outside. So again, double-sided tape. Make sure that it's just the right height equal to the outside. I suggest trying to make a coil smaller than the inside fixing one edge and then kind of uncoiling it. So tack down one side and then just kind of wrap it around so that it's nice and flat. And if you've done it right, it should be the same height inside as outside. Your pieces of long conducting wire, even though they may look like they're pure metal, actually have just a little bit of a clear insulation on them. You want to sand just about a half an inch off the edge of each one. This is going to allow for better conduction. You should be a little bit duller on the end and a little bit less of that copper shine. Take the cap that you've already assembled, the short conducting wire and the short Braided insulated wire. The end that's longest, you're going to want to spread out the strands a little bit because that's going to get affixed to your cap. So remember how we kept the nut loose? Push it up so that you've got a gap between the top of your bolt and the washer. That's going to allow you to wrap the edges of the braided wire around it. And then if you pull the bolt back down and tighten the nut, it'll keep your braided wire attached. The other end of the wire is going to get spread out in a fan shape. This is going to be our collecting strand. On the underneath side, you're going to be affixing the short conducting wire. Make a small loop 
on one side. Loosen the bolt just a little bit so that you can loop this on. Okay. You want to bend your small conducting wire so that when it's inside the can, it'll just barely touch the side of it. No loops, not pressed up too far, just so it barely touches the side of it. Take your long conducting wire and the can that you've made the parallel plates. You're going to want to wrap it around about halfway up the can with a little bit of extra. You're going to want to twist it. So that now it's looped around the can. This extra part you're going to bend up and around so that when you put the cap on it can easily be bent to touch the screw. Regular piece of electrical tape. Start on one side. Make sure you pull it tight. Wrap it all the way around so there's no gaps, and you can do multiple layers. In order to see your light jar spark, you want to take the collecting comb and put it near something that generates a lot of static, a TV with a tube in it, a monitor with a tube in it, or a Van de Graaff generator. The spark is going to travel through to the lid, through the nut and bolt on the inside, through the conducting wire, and because you've bent it just the right way, it's going to actually stay collected on the inside foil. Because it's surrounded by plastic and insulator, it's not going to want to pass through that plastic until the charge becomes too much. And in order to allow it to discharge, you're going to want to bend this sparking wire close to the bolt and you're going to see a spark right up here. Now you've got to be careful to only touch the insulated tape because if you touch the foil or the wire, you are going to get a shock. As the spark travels through the foil on the inside, through the insulating plastic, it's going to get deposited on this outside foil, which is touching the wire, comes back up through here and it's going to discharge.